Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. I'm back with my brother Raheel. I'm doing like the soft voice from like remember SNL. There was that the two ladies that like did the show about like pottery or something. No, the sweaty balls. Oh yeah, yeah, sweaty balls. The recipe ladies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I sound like. Anyway, hello Raheel. Hello, it's your NPR voice. Is it? I don't Is know. It? Is it? That's not your NPR voice. <laughs> Um, we're back to talk about succession. Successy. I think this was my favorite. This is my favorite episode. Episode six of season four. Only four episodes left of this show. Was it episode six? Oh, yeah. yeah, Only four episodes left. Yeah. This episode was called Living Plus. And, um, this was a, this was a banger for me. There were certain Mm -hmm. parts where I was lolling really hard. (laughs) Um, we open up on so delighted to see an old face we haven't seen in a couple of episodes, Logan Roy making a video about living plus a new Waystar product. And it's a classic Logan moment because he's cussing at people. He's berating his children. Were you happy to see him? I was, uh, yeah. for a second, I was like, oh, it's my old pal, Logan. I'm like, old pal. <laughs> I was like, it's just mean because like you do get you get excited for like half a second because you say oh look at Roy there he is again and then like 10 seconds in you can just see him getting angrier and nastier <laughs> and the thing is is like uh the you just know because the director who is female also yes. so you know he's just full of just the worst thoughts in his head the makeup uh-huh. lady is a female and she's and she's and he's just annoyed and you're like oh man I missed you he- <laughs> yeah he's a bad guy <laughs> yeah no uh, hot take Logan Roy not a good guy <laughs> are you a sicko yeah I love him and I was just so happy to see him and it was just like it was like you know it's like he's still there uh, mm-hmm. a ghost in the shadows <laughs> he's he he's obviously still looming large right I mean the fact that his kids Oh, the fact that his kids are even there, the fact that his kids are even a part of the conversation is all yeah. because of Logan. And I think that's what the point of this episode was at the end of the day, right? We haven't had a funeral yet, right? No, I don't Did think so. Think- I, no, they definitely, I know that uh, Connor sent that picture to Roman when I guess they were preparing the body for the wake, but I don't know if the wake has officially happened. I don't know if they're going to show it or not, or if it may have already happened. I don't, because if we think about the timeline, like, Mm -hmm. he died. The next day, they were all going to, no, the next day, they were at the townhouse. The day after that, they went Mm -hmm. to uh, meet with Madsen in Norway. Yeah. And then, I'm assuming this is like two, three days after that? A day after that? It's got to be. I mean, yeah. So it's got to be like at least a week since he's passed, right? Yeah, but they're not Muslims or Jews, so like we we know that they're not gonna get. They're not doing the quickie funeral. That's true, and and not to bring it back, but um, at some point on this podcast, you did uh, you did coin the phrase "the king's on ice." Prince Philip was on ice. <laughs> yeah, so Logan's probably on ice right now. He's probably just you know chilling out, literally. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> he's not dead. Okay, Brian Cox is a real person. By the way, do you know Brian Cox is married to a Persian woman? A what woman really? from Iran? Yeah, he's no, either married sense. to or yeah, I think he has. He's married to and has children with a uh, an uh, Iranian woman, 
And I know that because at the premiere, she was wearing this gown and, you know, it had the um, Zindagi, whatever, like the the woman freedom Mm -hmm. life slogan that's going around for the Iranian women, uh, women movement or whatever. I'm a terrible feminist. (laughs) I belong Um, with the likes of Logan Roy. But anyway, she was wearing that. And so, and then I looked at it and I was like, oh, okay. Because at first I was like, that's not Marsha. Like the actress (laughs) that plays Marsha, who is also, I believe, an Iranian woman. So Yeah, she's a famous actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Brian Cox is married too. Yes. Um, well, mashallah, Brian Cox. You know that's a, a weird, a weird thing when you think about like there's all these like uh, rough actors. Like you think about like these actors that are badasses. Yeah, like Brian Cox. He just seems so ferocious and all this other and all these. Um, and Brian Cox. Who else is another one? Uh, the guy from Hellboy. He used to. He was like on that motorcycle show, Sons of Anarchy. Uh-huh. I forget what his name is. And you see them, and they're like they always play like these really manly men. Uh-huh. But then it's also like, you know, they're drama kids at the end of the day. So they're yeah, actually they're theater, like soft they're theater people. guys. Yeah, they're, exactly. Yeah, they're theater. Like, yeah. What's his name from Stranger Things? The actor who plays yeah. Uh, yeah, Hopper. Yeah. What's his name? Where's I have no guy? idea. He was also another Hellboy. Yeah. Yeah. He's another guy. Uh, yeah. And he's married to um, Lily. What's her face? Lily <laughs> Allen? Yes. Oh. He's married to Lily Allen. He has babies with her. So, he's Theon's brother-in-law? Yes. He's Alfie. <laughs> Alfie <laughs> Allen's brother-in-law. He's Theon Grey- Greyjoy's brother. Anyway, listen. Back to the show. Also, like, Brian Cox does the voice of McDonald's. But up, 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 up. I know he's like a mean bastard, but like, I don't know. I wouldn't mind the cuddle. Anyway, um... Let's get on with it. Uh, I was excited to see him. He's berating uh, his kids in the video. And um, yeah, the CEO bros, Kendall and Roman, are gearing up to launch this stupid ass product. And I guess their their thought process is that they're going to raise the company's value Mm -hmm. to throw off Matson because Matson only has, as Kendall says, enough juice for $192. And so he doesn't have any more money after that. And so uh, in order to try to end the deal, this is what they're trying to do. Um, and they're trying to ice Shiv out. And I don't appreciate that. What do you think about how they're dealing with Shiv during this? Well, it's terrible, right? And it started right away. And um, this is one of those things where uh, the show set me straight kind of immediately because okay. Uh, like last episode, you know, Shiv has this meeting with Matson, and she doesn't tell them about what the meeting was. Like she doesn't tell them about what Matson revealed about the pint of blood or anything like that. So I was like, well, <laughs> she's of playing. Blood. Her- yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, she's playing her own game, and she's technically going against the family, and that's fucked up. You should always be for the family or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And <laughs> but then I was like. Oh, wait a second. These guys are assholes. These guys have been assholes to her from the beginning. And seemingly, they've been assholes to her since they were kids. Like, yes. when she calls them out on it, she's like, I know you. Yes. And I was like, oh, no, I've been in those situations, too, you where sure people have. know. <laughs> you sure have. You know, yeah, I very feel uncomfortable. Like- it's so funny because I feel like whoever watches Succession, like you, it really, it comes down to like your birth order. Like depending mm-hmm. on what birth order you are as an individual in your life is the person that you are going to uh, probably see yourself yeah. the most with. Like I will always see myself as a Shiv because she is the only daughter of, uh, the only sister of many boys. And uh, like, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think... I think if like, there and I is will a always mo- view you as a Roman, like always, yeah. no matter so, what. So if there's a moment from the show that I think you close, and I'm sorry for speaking on your behalf, but I think if there's a moment uh, from the show that I think you most closely associate with succession, it is uh, Shiv standing there in that white dress after 
she realizes that Tom has betrayed her at the end of season three. You know, mm-hmm. she's standing there with like a slight lean and she has that look on her face. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, I can't believe. So I think that is the show that you're watching. <laughs> the show that I'm watching is Roman squirming in his seat after he accidentally sends the dick pic to his dad. <laughs> that is who I am. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that the show I'm watching is the woman who schedules grief for herself <laughs> in the middle of the day. Yeah. That feels That's like sad, man. that was yeah. great. But also like so right shiv. Yeah. Um, but Kendall is in like full mad scientist manic mode. He is, he is, he is yes anding everything. And Roman is spiraling at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like he is not in a good place. But seeing the two CEO bros just, you know, like, yeah, like last episode, I was like, why don't you just sell the company? And then they are so passionate. Like even when um, Roman goes up to the mountain and he's like yelling at Madsen and saying like, you Mm -hmm. know, you killed my dad. Like and like you see the passion that these two have for like their family and their father's legacy and like, okay, they really want to carry it out, whatever. Like this episode is technically their first full day on the job yep. and i'm like wow you are not the right people for this job like there's it's a com- reason why nepotism is a bad guy because like because <laughs> like you're not good at this you know exactly so i think and in that instance i think that's where you see how the three of them are different um, because the one thing you realize is that Kendall and Roman have technically never worked a day in their life. They've Mm -hmm. never had to work for a living. You know what I mean? Like they, they have never earned anything at all. So they don't understand how work works. Mm -hmm. Shiv has, Shiv has. And now I don't know, you know, I'm sure she got, uh, she was, she got to advance her career at a higher rate because of who she is or whatever. But she still worked on a campaign. Like, she actually did work. She did work that had consequences. These two brothers have never done anything that have had any real consequences for them because they, like, like Roman literally blows up a rocket in the first season. (laughs) And he's CFO (laughs) or COO following it, right? Kendall kills a kid. And he gets yeah. blackmailed by his dad. And his dad says, oh, you know what? I have a spot for you right next to me. here." Yeah. That is the problem. They've yeah. never earned anything. They don't understand how work works. And all they think is that, oh, we know how dad did it. <clears throat> and so we can do it. We saw yeah. him be aggressive with people. We saw him just take charge. But what they don't realize is that, yes, he was an abrasive, uh, disgusting human being by the end of it. Yeah. But he created the thing. So he did work. He yeah. he actually did something, which they've never done before. Yeah. And that's why he says, their dad said to him, I love you, but you are not serious people. Because they're not mm-hmm. serious people. Um, no. Now, Kendall is, you know, he's he's a man with a vision. Okay. He's a man with a vision. He's got a lot of ideas. He's got a set design. But outside of that also, he's living his like full like Theranos you know, Steve Jobs, tech innovator dream. Yeah. Like this is disruptor. like he, yeah, he's a disruptor. <laughs> like fuck the patriarchy candle is back in like his yeah. top gun jacket or whatever it is. But yeah. like also you realize just like how little they have, like how, uh, how, how little the money itself means anything, right? Like this entire mm-hmm. show, like even them, the last episode being like, oh, like, you know, Shiv being like, get rid of, ATN. I don't give a shit. Like, just sell the mm-hmm. thing. Let's be done. Let's move on. Even this episode, she's like, I thought we were going to end this and then start Pierce on our own and whatever. And he's like, no, maybe we can have it all. And that's why she's the one, she's the one who's only worked. So she's probably, that's why she's like, you dumb motherfuckers. Like, you guys are idiots, but like, whatever. Right. Yeah. She's just trying to sell this thing. And I think that's also why she's working with Matson because she knows that the right thing to do is to let go of like daddy's legacy. Um, but they are like, you realize how little the money means to them. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if Matson was trying to buy the company instead of for 192, it was 292. I don't think that they would let it go because 
to Roman and Kendall, it's not really actually about the money. Like Roman at any chance he gets reminds people that he can just throw money at them and mm-hmm. make things go away because that's probably what his dad did. And he knows that that's the leverage he has as a Roy kid. Right. And then even Kendall coming up with a like elaborate set design. <laughs> and then that scene where they're like, he's like, let me see the clouds. And then they do the clouds and they just like the scene where they just stop at his face and it's just no reaction at all. It was, I laughed so hard. I was like physically, my entire body was shaking from laughter because he's just so entitled, but also yeah. like, like, you know, he's got this vision and he really thinks he comes in there with his like sunglasses on and he's like, let me see the set, whatever, all this stuff. Like he's just so excited. But then when it doesn't go his way, he's made these people work. Mm-hmm. overnight to create something that was fully in his head and because it didn't go exactly the way he thought it was going to go he scrapped the whole fucking thing like you just made yeah. people work mm-hmm. overnight for this and you just don't care like that to reminds me that like they just they don't care about the actual hard work of like the everyday man or even exactly. like this the woman joy who like Roman was like, I'm going to fucking fire her. Or like, even when he goes up to Jerry and he's like, I can fire you too. Like he doesn't actually care about um, anything besides the fact that he knows that there's so much money here that nothing they do will actually make any of these actions of theirs lead to anything of consequence. Yeah. And, and, And that's the thing, right? Because they don't know, again, they don't know what work is. They don't. So he thinks uh, that meeting with Joy, the first thing that he says, like you said, I'll turn on the money host for you. He says that yeah. twice. Like he's yeah. like, oh, I got the money that just to throw it down your throat, right? Yeah. Um, and then you know she makes a point about, well, you know, we want to make hits, but we're having a problem with talent because of the right lean that ATN is taking. Like people yeah. are associating that, and he doesn't want to hear it because all he thinks about, like he only thinks in terms of money. Like, okay, I have money. I can throw it at you. I can get a thing done. And he thinks that somebody like Joy is replaceable because he doesn't know. Like, he never, it never enters his mind, like, what somebody like that would have had to do to be in the position that she's in. Right. Like, she had to work her way up. And that's why, you know, when he realizes that, when she says, you are, I'm sure you're in the position you are for a very good reason. And he Mm -hmm. obviously, it's obvious to everybody that he isn't. He's only there because of his last name, because of yeah. whose son he is, right? Yeah. So that's why he takes offense to that. And his only thing is, well, I'm just going to fire people because I saw my dad fire people and he was okay. But yeah. there's a reason why his dad didn't fire certain people and he kept certain people, right? There's a reason yeah. why for all the insulting that he does for to like Frank and Carl and Jerry or whatever, they're still around because he understands like his dad understood that they served a purpose. Yeah. These jackass kids were never taught to respect work. Yeah. They were never taught to like respect what it, you know, what it takes. So that's the way yeah. that they that they're gonna handle it. Uh the Kendall stuff was hilarious and sad and hilarious and sad. It was just so good. I was just <laughs> thinking, like, you know, this birthday party that we have coming up for me, that's gonna be me the night before asking you to change the menu with my yeah. with my bullshit ideas. Yes, like you have bullshit ideas. You've got really yeah. like even the evite that you sent. My brother's turn. My brother has turned forty, and he's planning a fortieth birthday. Weekend. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. And he sent out the most ridiculous evite I have ever seen in my life. And we don't have to go into details about it, but it was like a full novel. And he yeah. was like, you filled it up with needy jokes and yeah. all these things, and it's just like, like it was just it was very Kendall. But like, yeah, that's what I, as I was watching the show, I was like, oh, no, this is probably what people felt like reading that thing. And then I was like, you know, what? I don't care. I'm going to fucking double down the day yeah. before the the day before the party. I'm going to tell you to change the entire menu. Well, this and I'll, is be, like, this and is and I'll be like, don't say no, don't say no, don't say no. Come on, don't this say no, don't say how, no. You can do it. You know, to get into specifics, Rio has a dream of us using his friend's pizza oven to make fresh pizzas for a barbecue and i said listen nobody's making fresh fucking pizzas for 30 people it's a lot of work and you said don't say no don't say no (laughs) 
And I'm trying to tell you, it's not a good idea. And I feel like we're going to test one pizza and you're going to be like, man, that took a lot of time. You know what? Yeah. Let's just scrap the whole idea. But by that point, I hope we'll have purchased too much pizza dough. That's right. And then we won't know and it's all going to go to waste. Because you know what, really? You vibes. also don't understand a day's hard work. Nope. Bad vibes all around for everybody. That party is going to be a disaster. <laughs> Can't anyway, wait. Um, when Kendall is... Uh, he comes to this realization that you can go up there during a product launch and just fucking make shit up and people will just like go with it. Like he says at one point something like it almost makes me not believe in capitalism, but like you can just go up there and you could just say whatever he gets Greg to uh, edit. He gets Greg to force a dude to edit the video of Logan to make yeah. up what Logan is saying. He says something like double the earnings or something, right? Like double the profit or something instead of what yeah. he said in the video. Yeah, grow the profits or something. In, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so he is going to just make shit up. And then even Carl is like, you can't fucking make shit up with money because it's I'm going to be on the line for it. And so right before he goes up, you're like, okay, his brother has bailed out because Roman originally was going to be one of the CEO bros up there. He's like, I'm not doing it. Frank has kind of like, you know, shook him down. His clouds didn't work out. His set design didn't work out. So you're like, Kendall is going to fuck this up. And like, he has that like big shoes, big shoes moment. Yeah. And I really thought like, this was not going to go well. Uh Mm-hmm. And then real by the end of it, I was like, "Living Plus sounds great." Oh no! <laughs> I was like the peanut gallery, like like G- Jerry, Frank, and Carl in the in the gallery, and Carl at the end, who's like, "I know special when I see special." Even though like half an hour before that, he's like cussing down Kendall and saying he has Kendall's dick in his hand, like <laughs> it just. <laughs> I think I think and, and I think that is um, that's the show's commentary, right? Because yeah. that's what it's saying is that you know all of these people, like Carl, by the way, that that little moment that he had with Kendall, that was great. I was like, oh, yeah. that's who Carl is in real life. Like Carl's been just this yes man for Logan, and he's been a, he's been a yes man for the kids because they're Logan's kids, right? But yeah. once again, Carl was a CFO for a reason. You don't just become a CFO yeah. in two publicly traded companies or whatever. It's because, what does he say? I've seen a couple of things or I know a couple of things about a couple of things or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but Carl's, yeah. You know, Carl is actually an accomplished person. And in that moment, Carl's like, hey, I did it for your dad. I'm not going to do it for you, right? Yeah. The show's commentary is Kendall goes up there. He does a presentation full of lies. And, you know, basically all he does is not set himself on fire. Like it's not a complete disaster, yeah. right? And because it's not a complete disaster, the market seems to think that it went well, even though the market has no fucking idea. So then Carl is like, well, the market seems to think that it's, it's going well. Then, you know, all I have to do is just go along with what the market says. So he falls back into the thing that has kept him alive all these years. He doesn't actually believe that Kendall is special. He's just saying that to Kendall just Kendall to stick says, around. We got a special. <laughs> I think poor Kendall bought uh, a matching bomber jacket for, uh, for Roman and Roman didn't want it. He had it hanging up there. I was so sad. But yeah, that's, you know, that and then the scene after when Kendall goes to the beach and yeah. he floats, right? And he's just, yeah. you can tell that in that moment, he is like, yes, I am. I, that's, it's me. I am the Messiah. I'm the number one boy. Every, everything that I always thought about myself is 100% true. Um, even Roman didn't believe me. Ro- even Roman had abandoned me on stage. But here I am. I did it all by myself because I'm the special one. Right. Yeah. And he's like floating. He's having this great moment on the beach. And it's like, bitch, you did a PowerPoint presentation for 12 minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all you did. Yeah. Full of lies. Yeah. You're nothing special. I did like that moment for Kendall because I do feel like this is like Kendall's big win episode. Like he really mm-hmm. got to like flex his Kendall guns. Like we've seen him screw the pooch at like his birthday party. We've seen him, you know, go almost go on Z Way and like get roasted. 
like we've seen him have these like really sad moments. The one time he won was when he went on that press conference and like berated his dad or whatever and like you mm-hmm. know went against his dad. But pretty much since then, it's been L's all around for Kendall. So yeah. I was happy for him. I also like the scene with the with him floating in the water because it was such a difference from like last season yeah. when he was found you know upside down in the water and they thought that he died or whatever. But like. I was happy for Kendall. And honestly, yeah, all that confidence living plus, I was like, this sounds great. But then I really thought about it and it was like, okay, it sounds like a senior community where they like let you watch like movies before they come out and like will randomly roll in like a movie star and just like let them take pictures with you. And and then by the end of it, he's kind of promising them like a like a medical like a health innovation, which mm-hmm. that's where I got like the Theranos thing because that was the whole thing with Theranos is like they just promised a thing that people mm-hmm. wish that they could have in medicine that was physically impossible to create. And Kendall is basically doing the same thing. And yeah. I was convinced. So that living plus thing, um, yeah. remember that conversation that him and Roman had when they're talking about it? Like when they're yeah. preparing for it, there's this little moment when they talk about death and yeah. how they're not cool with death yeah. and how they are actually looking for immortality. Yeah. And I think in in a way that that is basically what the entire show has been about. Like I listened to that Kara Swisher podcast mm-hmm. sometimes after the episodes and she said that they're, you know, Silicon Valley has these people that are obsessed with immortality that are obsessed that that just don't believe that they will ever fucking die. Right. That is the thing. And you hear those, you know, the two brothers, they seem to think like their ultimate goal is that, you know, you're going to move into living plus and eventually it's a way for you to extend your life. You're going to become like a computer chip and you are just going to live forever. And that's, you know, that's a thing that people, there are people out there that the black mirror episode. Black Mirror episode, there's like this guy named Ray Kurtzwheel who's been big on that for like the last 50 years or something. It's All basically right. you're going to move your entire consciousness onto a chip or whatever. Who Anyways. wants to live forever? Not me. Would you want to live me. forever? No way. Well, that's a lot I, I want to do. This. What do you got, like 30 uh, years left? <laughs> oh, come on, man. 70? Oh, I'm capping oh. at 70. I'm not trying to live past 70. Maybe. Maybe I go out in a blaze of glory at 41. Um, oh, okay. Anyways... <laughs> <laughs> but but I was thinking like the entire point of this show is I think Logan Roy that was his big fault also like it was his vanity yeah. to live forever his search for immortality was the reason why we're in this mess in the first place except he didn't think it was going to be a chip he thought he, he would continue to live through his kids yeah right that's, well, that's the like- reason why yeah, that's what legacy is. That's what a succession yeah. is, is that you're you're handing over your legacy or your work onto somebody else so that they can continue to carry it on. That's the whole thing. And so that yeah. is the way that people get to live forever is through, you know, somebody else carrying on their legacy and doing something really big. Otherwise, yeah. you're just another person who existed on Earth and died and nothing happened. Nothing really came from it. Man, that's dark and, and sad. It is dark and sad, but it's like if you think about who Logan Roy was as a businessman, the Mm -hmm. one thing that makes no sense for him as a business person is to have somebody as inept as his two sons be as close to the top as they are. Like They are objectively bad at their jobs, but he keeps them around because that is how he saw himself continuing to live on. And that's why he's so disappointed every time they let him down because he's like, oh, fuck. I am going to die and it's going to die with me because these kids that I've created are fucking morons. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have um, Matson really lean into, I mean, he, they're basically making an Elon, right? Like that's what Elon, they've made Lucas yeah. Madsen as an Elon Musk essentially. Um, and he has, he tweets out uh, something crazy that I had to Google later. And then, um, and he's doing it because uh, Shiv tells him, why don't you just uh, throw a spoke into the wheel and get this thing to stop? Um, Do you think that, do you think that he is, he is annoyed that they're doing this launch because he's worried that it's going to increase the company's value? Or do you think that he 
um, he's just annoyed. Like, why do you think that he's against them putting this, you know, show on? I don't think that he's worried at all about it increasing the company's value. I think what he's saying is that it's an outdated thing. Like you're selling, you're essentially just selling real estate, real estate yeah. with a Netflix subscription. That's all you're and, doing. Yeah. A senior right? homes with Netflix. A with senior homes. Yeah. And that's not the business that he wants to get into. Um, it is yeah. an expense for him. I think, you know, and I, I don't think that he's actually worried about the price or anything like that. And I think it's just bad business. It's not what, it's not what he went shopping for. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like when Jerry tells Roman, to like get her your shit together and like this yeah. isn't the stuff that's gonna work like yeah y- tech is coming and whatever it is that your dad built is not what is popping anymore yeah. so yeah. you're gonna have to figure it out um also during the presentations i loved when tom got on stage and did like his <laughs> oprah thing and was like you are atn you are atn and i am atn <laughs> <laughs> big episode for tom okay let's get into it um shiv and tom uh tom walks in on shiv during a scheduled grief sitting Mm -hmm. and um and that's it that's all shiv needs i guess they have a tender moment and then they have a not so tender moment with a game called bitey at a party (laughs) i was like wow you guys really just don't give a fuck um and then yeah they get back together and one of my favorite scenes was when Shiv is talking to him uh, after they have sex and she says something like, why did you betray me or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Like, are you going to say sorry for whatever? And he's very honest with her probably for the first time in a really long time where he's like, listen, I'm a person who has been climbing up and mm-hmm. I – uh, I like money and I, I have always, it's always been a thing for me. Like I like, I love you, but I also like money. And your dad was the only thing that was in our way. And your dad gave me an opportunity and I took it cause I like nice suits. Yeah. And I think like Shiv loved that. I think she's I, like, you know what? Shiv's yeah. not the only one. I love the <laughs> shit out of that too. I don't agree with that thinking, but he was so like brutally and like nakedly honest. I was like, yeah. you know what? I see why she finds it hot. You know what I mean? I was like, am I finding this hot? What's going on? Well, I think again, right? I think it's that honesty, right? That Mm -hmm. like we've talked about with Connor and Willa is that, Mm -hmm. or even maybe what, you know, what, what Logan probably liked with Carrie. It's like, obviously Carrie's not sleeping with him because she thinks he's like fucking Brad Pitt. Like, there's obviously a reason here, right? Or even mm-hmm. like the relationship with Marsha. Like these are people who have a reality of why somebody is with them. And I think that there's probably something that Shiv was losing there with Tom of like, I know why you're with me, but like, why are you really with me? I think it's the first time that he's probably been fully openly honest with her. And she's like, okay, let, the facade is down. Yeah. You're with me for a reason. And then when he's like, when she's like, he's like, would you, you know, give it all up for a trailer park to run away with me to a trailer park? She's like, I would go anywhere with you, Tom Wamsgand or whatever. It is. I never know how to say his last name. And I loved it. I love that moment for them. Yeah, it was really cute. I'm happy for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not happy? You think Shift could do better? Is that what's what's the hesitation? No, 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 no. I'm happy for them, but you know, they're these are these are not good. I love them, but these are not good people. Like no, of so I not. I like I'm happy for them as like, you know, trash receptacles. Like I'm yeah. glad that this is a trash receptacle that works. Um yeah. uh, there is a scene where um she's like grieving and what's his name walks in. I think Tom and Greg walk in and Tom I don't know if you noticed. But Greg, the only reason I noticed it is because I watched the, that part of the episode twice because they started it and then stopped and started again with Fahad. And Greg is walking in and Tom is like, you douche. And Greg <laughs> says, look at the menu for tonight. And like, I think they're looking at girls that they're probably yeah. going to try to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is so gross. 
Greg is such a piece of shit. And he, it's it's you know it's that like quad squad bullshit, right? He's a Roy. So it's yeah. like he when he tries to put the screws on that poor video editor or that sound editor, when he's like, Yeah, you just you just make it up like some sort of deep fake. He's like, No, yeah. I just I just want it done. Right? Another person who is complete who's in his position and has not earned it one bit. You know what not I mean? Not even a little. Yeah. All they know yeah. how to do is just put pressure on people and then just figure that it'll just get done. Yeah. I like when they're like <laughs> When they're like trying to come up with ways to modernize this living plus thing. And he's like, do you think that like tech would be into it? And he's like, well, historically, um, he says something like houses are not homes are not really uh, considered tech because they've been around for a lot longer. (laughs) They've been here for a while. They've been here for a while. It just cracked me up. I was like, oh, God, I love them. Um, Uh Not a good episode for your buddy, Roman. It was sad. like I couldn't believe that that's who I was rooting for. I almost felt like um, in the moment I was like, "Wait, that's not that's not who I thought Roman was, right?" And then I did like I thought back about it. I was like, "Well, why did I think he was better than this? Like, what has what has he shown to me that shows me that he's actually like he's actually a competent person, right?" Yeah, and it's like no, nothing, nothing yeah. at all. He goes, he just goes off firing people, doesn't understand the conversation. And then, you know, he knows that he's fucked up, right? And all he needs is just a little pat on the back from Kendall to be like, yeah, it's fine. Nothing matters, right? And then they're just, yeah, bros, yeah, we, it, nothing matters. So then he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to fire Jerry too. Because once again, doesn't understand how people work. Doesn't, doesn't understand how work works. So... I think that also there's this thing between the two of them where he's kind of letting Kendall run with it, right? And I think once he sees the set and he sees Kendall cooking up numbers, I think, again, Roman is like, oh, right, we're in charge, so we can do whatever the fuck we want, and I'm going to just go and do all kinds of dumb fuck shit, Mm -hmm. and there's no consequences for it. And Kendall's going to go up there and fuck this all up, and there's no consequences for it. So when Kendall goes up there and Kendall kind of kills it right and the market is like a buzz and it doesn't make you know it's not the rocket explosion that i think roman probably thought it was going to be that Mm -hmm. is when you see roman kind of like storm out and then be in a cab watching uh, and listening to a clip over and over again of his dad a fake video of his dad berating him like it's it's so sad Talking about his micro dick, and he's just oh listening God. to it on a loop. It's insane. It's, it's so yeah, sad. He's a, he's a very damaged person. Um, and even like after he fires Joy, and then Jerry calls him out on it. He's like, "Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't fire her. I just told her she's fired to her face." Yeah. And Jerry's like, "What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you fired her." But like, yeah. he hasn't thought through. You know, Jerry's like, "We're gonna have to get counsel. We're gonna have to talk to legal." We're gonna have to do all. We're gonna have to talk to HR or whatever. It never occurs to Roman because he doesn't know how a company works. Really, he just knows that he's in charge and he thinks that he's earned it, but he hasn't. Do you think that he is like? Do you, did you think about why he would be so sad about like um, his brother doing well and him and he like while well, he's having kind of a bad day? Uh now, are you asking me as a younger brother? I'm um, asking you as a as a Roman yourself. As yes. as a viewer, well, I'm not. First of all, we we should really clarify that. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I know, no, no, no. I don't no, have that as, video as a the- person who I think like a, a, not no yeah like as a younger brother or like why yeah as a viewer like do you have an assessment for why why Roman is having such a a bad time? I think it's because he's not grieved, guys. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously... He doesn't even accept condolences. He says, my tummy is full. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You gotta... I don't know. I I, I think he was maybe uh, on some level, maybe he was looking for a way out. Like, I think he wants out of this. He doesn't want the responsibility because he knows that he can't handle the responsibility. And if Kendall had gone up there and just completely fucked up, he would be out of the responsibility, but it also wouldn't be his fault. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. now he's got to go another day pretending like he knows what he's doing when he knows what he doesn't. Yeah. So I think maybe... he wants to, 
Yeah, I think he wants to hold on to his dad's company because that's his only way of holding on to his dad. But mm-hmm. he doesn't actually want to do any of the work that is required to hold on to his dad's company. And I think yeah. also, like, if if he, let's say, you know, like we've talked about this, if they sell the company, they have plenty of money and they go about the rest of their life being co- perfectly comfortable, which is fine for Roman. But what is he doing with that money for the rest of his life? He mm-hmm. doesn't get to, like, wield any power after that. And I think that that yeah. to him feels kind of useless. Like, what do I have all this money for if I'm not using it to, like, hire and fire people and hide shit? Okay. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Remember that episode where they like found a guy and they like blackmailed him to like it was like an employee or something. Right, the guy at the bachelor party. They they had a guy for Kendall's bachelor party. They paid him money to get Kendall's uh, initials tattooed on his forehead. Yes, wild stuff. <laughs> These I are mean, our heroes, by the way. Yeah, These so are the like- guys that we're rooting for. Yeah, but like Roman has so Roman has shown this kind of shit like multiple times throughout mm-hmm. the episodes, like throughout the seasons is like he is one of the ones that will happily wield power like and money. You know, Kendall still has that feeling of like, I'm a good guy. So like I'm trying to do right, even though he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Mm-hmm. But like Roman, he's happy to throw money down people's faces anytime he can. Yeah, you know. Sad times for him, but a uh, great. I think this was a win episode for Shiv. What do you think? For Shiv, yeah, overall. So it's a win episode for Shiv for me because she is now clearly the protagonist to me. Like she is the person within that family who I'm rooting for. If there's a power struggle, or if there's anything, Shiv is the one that I'm backing. Both Kendall yeah. and Roman can get fucked. I'm completely done with both of them in terms of like leading the company. Yeah, I'm done with Kendall too. That, that beach scene is the one that really got me. Because, like, I was like, oh, you know. Like, you he, know he's going to talk about that in his memoir. He put, he wrote the number one with his feet in the sand. <laughs> the jackass. What a dork. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. And I think, like, he really does believe that, like, you know, his that piece of paper from his father and I also think that there is, it's so funny because, like, even though we've talked about, like, how how um shiv is the only one who's actually worked Mm -hmm. throughout the show like especially when the show started shiv was not part of the company at all her only association with the company was her name and then her fiance but or boyfriend at the time um but she wasn't ever really part of the business at all so even Mm -hmm. that episode with the where they find the piece of paper kendall is very happy to remind her it doesn't fucking say siobhan roy right yeah it's so I think that that is also a thing that like Roman, I think, is honest to say, like, yeah, we were just kind of like not going to tell you. But Kendall is still kind of a snake to be like, oh, we were doing it to protect you. Like, that's why we didn't tell you about what was going on. What an asshole. Yeah. Nothing, think, nothing. No, sorry. Yeah, I think he has like the that. Yeah, that Messiah complex of like my father wrote my name and my father underlined my name and my name was on that paper and I'm the one that did this. And like, I got to go up there and I'm the one that's shaking up the market. Like yeah. I did something for the first time in my fucking life. <sighs> Depressing. I love them. I love them so much. I'm going to miss them so much. Miss them so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any other thoughts about this episode? I don't think so. I think we covered everything. All right. Um, you know, if living plus was a real thing, I wouldn't mind living there. (laughs) I'm just saying. Just the content? You want the content? It just like sounds comfortable. I mean, I like being in an all inclusive resort. Is that kind of what it is? Like, you know how there's that, there's that commercial for, uh, that Malibu rehab or whatever. Looks amazing. It makes me wonder, like, sometimes, you know, do I just, like, pick up an addiction to go there? What do I need to do to get a vacation, you know? You know, one of the things that is a requirement for staying at that place is one of the things that you seem to enjoy. So I don't think you'd have a great time at the Malibu uh, rehab facility. No, no, that's not true. All right. Well, um, where do you think the trio goes from here, the siblings? Because we, we came in, they were all on the same page. And we are now, I don't think anybody's on the same page anymore. 
I think uh, Roman is setting for an implosion of some sort. Roman's yeah. going off on an implosion. Kendall has determined that all the company really needs is just Kendall. So he yeah. will throw Roman under the bus because Roman is acting erratically. Yeah. Um, so I think Roman is out. What I want to see happen is Shiv outmaneuver Kendall, which I think she's very capable of. Um, and with Matson, I think that's what's going to happen. That yeah. would be th- that's the thing that would seem right to me if and, if a, if a memory if a, if a member of the Roy family is going to be involved. And also, if Shiv has Tom on her side, mm-hmm. and Tom has Greg on his side, mm-hmm. she's got all the guys. And yeah. I think when it comes to like the bo- the people like the uh, the dinosaurs, they yeah. probably respect Shiv the most out of yeah. the three of them. So yeah. I know I'm very excited for her, but also nobody knows she's pregnant. Oh, that's true. She still hasn't told Tom, huh? Hasn't told Tom. I was like, you're not showing? He didn't ask any questions? Or... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what right. was it? 20 weeks? Show yeah. 20 weeks, right? You show. I mean, I showed uh, very early because I'm a fat <laughs> person. So it's different for me. But her body is incredible, though. That's Sarah Snook booty? Oh, my God. <clears throat> I will no not comment. <laughs> No <laughs> comments about that. No way am I going on record with how I feel about it. It's the greatest on HBO. I feel very, I feel very positively. I, listen, I have shared my thoughts uh, in private with you, and I would hope that we can honor uh, that privacy in the You future, love her butt. But... Just say it. Why, <laughs> why are you being so weird about it? You love her butt. Move on. Grow up, okay? Uh...